Grace is the presence of the divine. in a way that makes it feel like and seem like the unseen hand moving everything. Grace is that which is flowing and moving and creating, but without without the form, without the pomp and show. Grace, grace is that which remains usually unseen and happy to remain unseen, happy to remain unnamed, because very frequently that which is due only to grace we attribute to something else. Oh, I did this. I worked really hard. I made that happen. It was grace. What wakes you up every morning? Well, most of us would say, well, because I remember to set the alarm clock. What actually wakes you up? Grace. We are gone. No control over yourself when you're asleep. There's nothing in you that wakes you up. What wakes you up? What is it that digests our food? We throw in junk. Look at how this incredible incredible vessel of a body, this machinery. Look at how that works. Amazing. We can't even remember to breathe. When we do meditation and I say, focus on your breath. Thirty seconds, maybe. Can you do it before your mind wanders? Maybe a minute, a couple minutes, if you've got some practice meditating, 10 seconds if you don't. All right, that's why we add a mantra. All right, keep us focused. We can't even remember to breathe for more than 30 seconds. What is it that's breathing us? I remember when I first met Pooja Swamiji, it used to drive me crazy because I was amazed, in awe, enamored. Just, I, I mean, there are no words to explain what it's you know, like to be in his presence. And, but I had no framework in which to put it, so it wasn't like I walked in knowing, oh yeah, now I'm in the presence of an enlightened master, and so it should feel like this. I had no framework for it. And so I was just completely amazed every hour of every day. And I, I would say to him, oh my God, you are amazing. And he would say, it's all God's grace. And after a few times of that, I literally started saying to him, yeah, 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 I know it's all God's grace, but really you are amazing. And he would say, it's all God's grace. And it actually, it actually drove me crazy because I felt like he wasn't listening. Yes, yes, I knew it was God's grace and you are amazing. You are so special. You are so different. You are so incredible. You are so divine. You are all these things. And he would say, it's all God's grace. And it was, it was years before I finally realized that this was not just a humble deflection of my and others' praise, that it was not just a practice of staying humble, but actually this is his actual experience. He doesn't just say it because, he, because he's humble. He says it because that is his truth. That is what he's living and experiencing, and it doesn't matter what he's achieving. 
or accomplishing or doing. He knows it's all God's grace. I can't wake myself up. I don't remember to breathe. I mean, he probably does, but you know, what? it's all God's grace. So grace is that, which tragically we ignore and we, we try to give lots of other different types of names to it. And grace is okay with that. That's what's so graceful about grace, right? Person who's always, you know, stealing the limelight saying, I did that. Not very graceful. The one who's, you know, the, the one in the back, sort of serving from behind. That's the one people actually, those who pay attention, actually notice and say, wow, God, isn't she graceful? Look at that. There's a grace in that. Why is it the same word? Because that's how grace is. Grace is not the hitch over the head. Grace, you actually have to notice that it's grace. And this is the tragedy when people say, God, I wish that there were grace in my life. I wish I could experience grace. Because it's there and available for everyone. But we're just looking in the wrong place. We're looking in, in the limelight. Whether it's the limelight of outside of us. Oh, that's flashy. Oh, that looks nice. Nice house, nice car, nice job. Or we're looking at the limelight inside of us. Why aren't they paying enough attention to me? When do I get to be the boss? Doesn't everybody know I'm the one who did this? I've got much more potential than this. I'm supposed to be something bigger and better than this. So that's, that's the, the distraction by the inner limelight. And we're attracted to that. That's where most of our eyes go outside and where our thoughts go inside. Grace is okay. There, waiting, waiting, waiting. Until you look away from just that which is hogging the limelight and realize, oh wait, grace is there, has been there the whole time. But I've been, I've been so focused on that which glitters, outside or inside, that I haven't even noticed this incredible presence of grace that's there and waiting for you. Grace is that, by the way, which gives that full permanent experience of happiness. Because when we realize that grace is there and that our only task is to allow it rather than getting lost in the glitter and spotlight outside or the glitter and spotlight of my mind inside. And I can just allow grace to permeate me. This is what creates the permanent happiness. But grace requires a surrender. When we were speaking about you weren't here, but we were talking about surrender for a few nights, a few nights ago. And I kept emphasizing the need to bow, to get out of the way, and that that's what surrender is. And the reason for that is because grace needs space to flow. And so when our, our ego is hogging all the space, I'm the one who did it. 
I'm more than this, I'm bigger than this, I'm this, whatever it may be. When our ego is hogging all the space inside, there's no room for grace to flow. And this is where that surrender becomes so important, so that there is room for grace to flow.